Hi guys, welcome to Cryptids Canada. I hope everybody's having a great day. So, I have got big plans for tomorrow. My daughter and I are going to the big grocery store in town. Then we're going to go to some really nice sweet spots and take some pics and some videos. And then you guys can get an idea of the beauty that surrounds me. Honestly, guys, I don't know if it's because I'm older and I've learned to appreciate certain things, but I feel like this world has got so much more to offer than I ever gave her credit for. Um, take a look around you, you guys. Start appreciating, you know, what you're surrounded by because uh, I think it helps you to be in a better place mentally. That's my opinion anyways. Okay, enough of the jibber-jabber. This story was really, really good. It's titled, Another Bigfoot at the Cabin Story. That, that was funny. Okay, also, you know how I said I was going to stop reading out the personal compliments that people write in the beginning of each encounter? Well, this one was to you guys, most of it. So I'm going to go ahead and read that one. She starts out, uh, hello, CCC. Before I start, I really never thought I would tell my encounter. I was always afraid of people picking apart my story. I have grown to love several channels, but I have absolutely fallen for the followers on this channel. I enjoy the comments section as much as I have fallen for Leslie. Now honestly, Leslie, I, like everyone else, find your voice to be something very special and I would hate to not have you to listen to. And she just goes on about, you know, sticking with it and so on and so forth. But I actually found it really nice that uh, you guys got a nice compliment like that because you really do deserve it. Okay, so back to the encounter. So she says, we had a small cabin north of Bella Coola, B.C., our fairly small family spent as many hours as we could at the cabin. My parents were always trying to repair it and make it as comfortable and updated as possible. Dad worked with a fella, Enrique, who loved carpentry. His wife had died and he was left to raise a son, about my age, all on his own. So my parents took pity on him and his son, of course, and started inviting them up to the cabin with us. Anyway, he started working on the cabin as his way to repay my parents, I guess. I was fine with it because Peter, the son, was about my age, approximately 10 years old. So now I had a friend besides my younger brother to play with. Dad and Enrique started working on a bedroom addition, so Enrique and Peter started sleeping in there as they worked on it. Peter, the son, started waking up and screaming. He kept saying there was a monster looking in the window. Finally, my dad talked to Peter's dad, Enrique, and said that Peter could sleep in with my brother, Greg. There was bunk beds in there, and Peter felt safe right away. As I recall, it was really hot out, probably mid-July. We had all the windows open, so it was more comfortable for sleeping. No air con at the time. Unfortunately, Peter was spared only one night of peace because the next weekend that they came up, Peter took the top bunk and my brother was on the bottom because he was much younger than Peter and I. Then again, we were all woken up by Peter screaming holy terror. My brother came running out fast and told Enrique and my dad, who were chatting at the kitchen table. He said he heard heavy breathing coming from the open window. He said he looked back at the window and saw a big black hand rip open the screen and then reach in and start feeling for Peter. My brother was only five at the time, so the dads were skeptical until they heard Peter start screaming. Both fathers ran as they heard Peter scream and they saw the arm slide back through the hole in the screen. They pulled Peter from the top bunk and Peter told them his story. He said that he had woken up, and he said he felt something rubbing his head. He turned over and saw the monster standing at the window with its arm coming through the screen. 
Then he started to scream. He begged and pleaded to his dad to please take him home. They left the next morning, and we didn't see either of them again, till, fast forward 15 years. My dad had passed away from cancer, and Mom had no desire to go to the cabin anymore. But Greg and I would use it all the time. We would invite our friends up and swim and ski and ride our snowmobiles and pretty much just party. It was mainly drinking, occasionally a joint, but never hard drugs. My best friend, Shaylin, was going on and on about this new fella she was seeing, and she was sure he was the one. So I told her to bring him to the cabin so we could meet him. She asked if it could be just the four of us, me and Steve, my fiancé, and her and the new fella. So I said, sure, no problem. She didn't want him to be overwhelmed. Well, my brother Greg ended up coming up as well. He walked into the cabin and said nonchalantly that Shay and some guy were arguing in the driveway because he didn't want to stay. Then Greg said he thought it was that kid Peter who used to come up, the one who saw the monsters. I was dumbfounded because I wondered whatever happened to him. So I went out and sure enough, it was Peter. After a warm welcome hug, I was able to convince him to come in and at least talk about it. It was only 7 p.m. and still light out. It was summer again, which was what triggered his memory and, of course, the cabin. Now, though, it was really upgraded and had air conditioning, so open windows weren't a necessity. Peter admitted he was so traumatized by what had happened and he saw a counselor for several years afterwards. They had figured out that he had seen a Sasquatch. That blew Greg and I away. Of course, we had heard of Sasquatch, being that we lived in B.C. our whole lives, but had never put two and two together. We had never really spoken about the incident after it happened. At all. So we were able to convince Peter to at least stay the night, and he agreed under one condition, no drinking. He wanted us to have our wits about us. We all agreed and opted to have a Netflix night. No bonfire outside either. Boy, did we love Shay, we teased. That night went smoothly. The next morning, the guys got up early and went out on the lake fishing. We had a great day, so Peter agreed to another night. That's when all hell broke loose. We all had a couple of beers and were playing a game of Monopoly because it had started to rain. Greg was out on the front porch talking to his friend on his cell when he came in saying he thought he saw something standing inside the wood line beside the driveway. He said it was swaying from side to side. Then mine and Steve's pit bull, Softy, started shaking and trying to squeeze under the couch, which he had never done before. Peter started losing it. He said it was a Bigfoot. He had learned enough to know that what Greg described was indeed a Bigfoot. At that point, we all started to panic. We went around and turned off all the lights and locked the doors. We were all freaking out, to be honest, but none of us were leaving. Steve and Greg went upstairs to see if they could see anything, and sure enough, it was standing right where Greg had seen it earlier, and it was still swaying side to side, and it was still moaning sadly. Greg whispered to us to sneak upstairs very quietly so we could see the Bigfoot without being detected. We were in shock watching this thing standing in the soft rain and swaying side to side. Then it stepped forward as it was staring towards the front porch where Greg had been. Then, even though it couldn't see us, it looked straight up at us then screamed a shrill sound, then pulled a branch down and tossed it towards the cabin. Then it took off running back into the woods. There didn't seem to be any anger at all. It looked like she was more shocked that we were watching her without her knowing. And yes, she was a she. She had large breasts that hung down to her waist. She had orange-colored hair. And she looked just like an orangutan. But 
much taller. She had long hair that flowed from her arms and long flowing hair off the rest of her body. Her face was gray in color. Her eyes were deep, deep brown in color, but looked to be shaped like a child that has Down syndrome, respectfully. After that, it was so quiet. We didn't dare turn on a movie or make any sounds. We took turns sleeping in shifts, and when the sun came up, Peter had all their things ready to go. I have to admit, Greg and I were pretty freaked out after that and didn't go north for a while. It did prompt us to seek knowledge, of course. I learned from a couple of your videos, actually, that female Bigfoot do take a liking or kindness to children who have been orphaned by their moms. I ran this past Peter, and he agreed that he had been so sad when he would see us and our mom, and it would break his heart. He said he always cried himself to sleep, and when he woke up, she was there. Peter also listened to your videos, and even though he too loves your voice, he prefers to watch the research videos. But hey, oh well, he still subscribed, lol. But I am curious what your thoughts are on this. Do you think female Bigfoot have that kind of emotion to little kids who have lost their mums? Or is this all hooey? And that's the end. There's no signature. But uh, uh, to answer your question, no, it is not hooey. I do believe there is some kind of a connection there. I uh, have at least three or four videos uh, of people that have sent in stories much like this, where a female Bigfoot kind of shows a lot of emotion towards children. So it's kind of funny because I went back trying to get the uh, episode numbers for you guys, and I literally cringed listening to those early videos. Oh my gosh, I had the worst mic. I stumbled over my words. I cleared my throat. I had no experience or practice at all. And uh, I clearly did not edit. I learned to edit a little further down the road. <laughs> but oh my gosh, I don't even want to give you guys the the episode numbers. I'm thinking I might go back in a little while and redo them. Oh, Lord. <laughs> That's a real cringe moment for sure. But yes, I do believe there is definitely something to it. Um, every time you hear a story about a bad Bigfoot or a negative Bigfoot, it's usually the males. Uh, I do believe the females have much more compassion. But anyways, uh, all right, guys, I love you. And remember to help each other, be kind to each other, and love each other. Hopefully we'll see you back here in a couple of days. Bye for now.